Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time and you enjoy things high performance, sleep, breath, stress, then hit subscribe. In this video, we're gonna be talking about carbon dioxide tolerance, what it is, what carbon dioxide does to our breathing, what it does to our brain, and how building tolerance to it can actually help with stress and anxiety. So carbon dioxide is typically thought as a waste, waste gas. As, as we break down energy, one of the byproducts of that is carbon dioxide, and another one is water, and that breaks down into a molecule that allows us to activate our muscles and our brain. However, without carbon dioxide in the system, oxygen can actually get released from the blood. So there's a relationship and a need between the two. And that's gonna be important as we discuss later on what CO2 tolerance is, and how that can help with things like exercise performance. However, carbon dioxide is also the main stimulus to breathe. We have chemoreceptors in our carotid bodies and in our brain, and that's constantly detecting the levels of CO2. So if CO2 rises, that sends a signal through our body that we need to breathe more. So when we need to breathe more, what then tends to happen is our activation of our nervous system then kicks in. Because within our brain, we also have sensors that are detecting CO2. And when it detects high levels, the part of our brain called the amygdala, which is our threat detection system, is activated. So in stressful situations, and in situations that might make us feel nervous or anxious, we get a rise in CO2 levels, and that causes the stress response, fight or flight. However, when we're in these situations, and if we're in these situations often, it can cause an overactivation of our stress response. Our breathing becomes faster, we offload more carbon dioxide, so the level of carbon dioxide in our body overall is just slightly lower. So our sensors, which basically are um, receptors, they work on the more exposed they are, the less sensitive they are. So if you're not getting exposed to CO2 because you can't, you're hyperventilating, you're offloading it with your, with your mouth breathing or a pore pattern because of stress and anxiety, then we become sensitive to those changes. So what then tends to happen is people become more sensitive to anxious and stress-like situations. So we can build a tolerance to that. This is what I do with the training and what you might do today if you're on the course. Then we can actually build a tolerance to stressful situations. We build resilience. What's actually happening down at the level of the, the blood? So as we breathe, we breathe in oxygen through our nose, hopefully. It goes into our lungs, into our alveoli. The oxygen then transfers into hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is then carried to working muscles. Now, the oxygen cannot actually get out of those work that, at the working muscles unless there's a presence of high levels of carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide then actually forces, essentially, the oxygen into the cell, which allows us to create energy, recover from exercise, reduce fatigue. So if we're to build a tolerance to carbon dioxide, we're also building a tolerance to high levels of CO2 in the, near, the, near the muscle, so more oxygen can be used. Can be used. This is the basis of the book, The Oxygen Advantage by Patrick McEwen. What about if we build a tolerance to CO2 in the brain? Same thing, sensors in the brain are detecting for those levels and it flicks on that flight or flight fear response in our body if we're to have CO2 rising, especially if we're sensitive to it. But if we can expose ourselves to higher levels of CO2, then we can dim down those sensors so that we have a higher tolerance and we build resilience. So this is great for individuals who are feeling stressed and anxious to do over time to bring those levels down. So there's actually a study that looked at students that were going in for exams and looking at their levels of CO2 tolerance using the breath, the prolonged exhale breath test, which I'll put a video to just here. And in this study, they looked, they correlated the level of CO2 with the level of anxiety they felt about their exams. And when they practiced certain breathwork techniques that improve their levels of carbon dioxide tolerance, then their level of stress pre-examination actually came down. So there's a direct correlation between our ability to tolerate carbon dioxide and our ability to handle stressful situations. So the idea is that we want to have a better tolerance to CO2 to improve our exercise performance, to be able to control our arousal state, and to bring down our levels of stress and anxiousness. 
If you enjoyed learning about carbon dioxide tolerance, you have any questions, comment below. Subscribe to the channel, more to come.